Hey there, Bridge family, it's Pastor Jeff, and I'm coming to you from Entebbe, Uganda, in day one of the extended mission to the people of God here in Africa. I wanna let you know that I have just completed an elders meeting online, and we as the under-shepherding team of the Bridge family felt compelled that I begin to reach out again every day and just let you know what God continues to do, that we see his providence, Genesis 50, 20, that he means and uses every single piece of our reality. And in a trying time, when to be honest, there's a very heavy heartedness. There's also a recognition that God has a plan. It's a perfect plan and he'll work it through our imperfections. And to his glory, I'm here to tell you that is already revealing itself to be true here in this time. Now, I want to speak to you first about some things that we are going to do as a bridge family to turn this time into an offensive maneuver where we live on mission to the glory of God. You see, first and foremost, in the immediate sense, I want to ask you, all of you in the bridge family, locally, regionally, and globally, to join me in a new prayer mission. I don't wanna have a prayer meeting. I want to literally begin a new prayer mission that will begin in us a new prayer movement. I'm asking all of you in the context of where you live, between eight and 9 p.m. in the US, eight to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, wherever you are, to use that time to missionally pray that God will use this time and this unexpected change to take ground for the kingdom, that we will live prayerfully on offense. And for our family members outside of the U.S., 8 to 9 p.m. your time, please devote that time to this missional prayer, that we will be united as a family in prayer to the glory of God. And secondarily, every single Bridge family member as soon as you wake up, wherever you wake up, whenever you wake up, before your feet hit the ground coming out of where you sleep, I ask you to pray so that you will once again missionally ask God to guide you on this day and that you will pray that God is being glorified through what is happening in this missional time. That Every one of us in our family, we will be united in prayer in the evening, missionally, and every one of us, wherever we are, will be united in prayer as we wake up. As we open our eyes, we will be unified as a people in prayer and pray missionally. And to that end, I want to give all of us a four-step, a four-point prayer outline to follow. And it's easy to remember. Acts A. C-T-S. Remember the book of Acts. If you will pray, if all of us will pray, A-C-T-S. We pray first adoration, praise to God Almighty. We praise him for his providence. C, we pray personal confession. We repent of anything that may hinder our prayers or serve as a barrier between us and Jesus our Christ. Then T, we pray with thanksgiving. All of the things that you and I have to give thanks for, we thank him. Now it's related to adoration, but it's not the same. We praise him for who he is. We thank him for what he has done. A, we first are going to show adoration. C, we then confess our sins and repent. T, we then pray with thanksgiving, thanking the Lord for all that he has done and provided. And then lastly, S, which stands for supplication or intercession. This is when we are praying for one another, praying for somebody other than what God may be doing in our lives or in our immediate circles. So let us first and foremost become a people of a prayer mission and a prayer movement. That begins now. Next, I want you to know some of what God is doing actively. I'll share more as we go. It's my intention, praise God, to send you a very special Christmas Eve message from here in Uganda.
I will, praise God, be sharing with you the sermon that was intended to be shared last Sunday from right here in Uganda. And, praise God, we're going to continue to take ground for the kingdom together. Let me tell you about here, day one, day one on this extended mission. I want you to pray for Dennis, and I want you to pray for Joanna. Joanna works down below where I'm at now, the Hotel Best Western in Entebbe. She works in a souvenir shop. I went down to that shop as I was getting materials, praise God, to turn this hotel room into a war room. In the same way that when I go to the ocean or I go to be alone with the Lord, I came to realize this time it's not for me to recover from COVID, although praise God, I hope and expect that I will. But this is a time to go back into that place of personal prayerful intercession for those that need to hear the gospel, the future disciples who will make disciples who will make disciples. In short, I went down to the store that's inside this building, kind of like a, a, a super Walmart that's been shrunk in the dryer down to a little tiny thing. But I got school supplies. I got the paper that will hang on this wall. I got the markers so that I can work through the way that I think and hear from God. This is going to become a place where God is going to use it, I know, to advance the kingdom by his grace and for his glory. Well, in that process, I met a woman named Joanna. She works in one of the souvenir shops. And while we were waiting for somebody to come and bring some help, she began to ask me why I was here. And I'm here to tell you, I believe Joanna is a person of peace because as I shared the gospel and then the contrast to the true gospel versus what is being spoken of here in the prosperity lies, she responded more than favorably. And as it would be, she could not get what was needed. And she said, could you come back tomorrow so that we could continue our conversation? And I said, yes. Secondly, there's a man named Dennis. He's the police officer slash security soldier outside this hotel. He works the metal detector and he checks all the bags for weapons and he's the security force. And as I was walking out to just walk around the grounds and get some exercise, I thanked him for his service and he asked me why. And when I told him that I used to be both a police officer and a soldier and that my son is a police officer and that my father-in-law was a lifelong police officer, we just kind of hit it off. And as I was walking away, he said, I want to thank you for your appreciation. Uncommon language, not something you'd expect. It got my attention. Well, after I had walked around and I had gone in and I'd gotten the materials to turn this room into a war room, and I had met Joanna and made the promise to meet her tomorrow, having told her that I wanted to introduce her to my brother Moses and my sister Sarah here locally, and she was responding favorably, but when I came back around to come into the hotel, this man, Dennis, had to go through my bag. And he said to me as he looked, you have all these writing materials like a schoolroom. What are you writing? And I said, well, I told you that I used to be a police officer and a soldier, but that's not who I am now. Today, I'm a pastor, a missionary. And he looked at me with big eyes and he said, what are you going to write? And I said, I'm going to write strategies that God reveals to me that will advance the kingdom here in Uganda and around the world. And he said, really, tell me, where is your church? So I told him, and as I was telling him, his countenance began to visually change. You, you may understand what I'm talking about. As I was sharing with him, he was becoming visibly agitated. I, I could tell it was unsettling him. And I'm thinking, oh no, what, what exactly is going on? Well, when I finished, he let me finish. And then he said to me, after I had highlighted all the places in Uganda where our bridge family is and where we had visited, he said this to me with a very stern but very respectful tone and countenance. He said, why haven't you brought the church to my region? It took me back. I said, where, where is your region? And he says, I'm in the northern region. Uh, my village is Lira. Do you know Lira? Do you know Lira is between Gulu and Kabong, and it is one of the places we stopped. Now, I want you to just think about this for a minute. What do you suppose are the chances 
that I could be in Entebbe, Uganda on an unexpected extended mission, bump into somebody the way only God can bump, bump into somebody who tells you that they're not from here in Entebbe, they're from way up north and ask you, do you know where it is? And I literally, I literally said, yes, I know where Lyra is. I stopped there. We stopped there to get gas. He said, you know my village. And then his countenance changed again. He said, well, then why haven't you brought the church to my village? And I said to him, because God hasn't led us there yet. And we don't do this where we just blast out. We go where God calls us and we bring the church to where God calls us to bring the church. And then I asked him his name and he said, my name is Dennis. I said, Dennis, this is how God would have it to be done. And then Dennis said to me, and please hear me, day one, extended missional stay. Dennis said to me, well, then we should bring the church to my village. Note the pronoun. <laughs> In a day when the world is upside down and crazy over perverted pronouns, this was a pure God-honoring pronoun. He said, then we should bring the church to Lyra, my village. I said, Dennis, let me just ask you, I want to make sure that I understood you. Are you saying to me that you would help me as God would lead and our church family, if I introduce you to my brother Moses, our Ugandan servant leader, are you telling me that you want to and are willing to help us to bring the church to your village, Lyra? He said, yes. We should do this. We can do this. We can and should bring the church to Lyra. You want to talk about burning bushes. On day one, when frankly, I got to tell you, my heart is absolutely broken. Absolutely broken that I'm not home. And at the same time, I know that God has a plan and it is perfect and he'll work it through my imperfections as long as we continue to say, yes, Lord. I can't wait. Moses is due here any minute. He's coming here about four o'clock local time. And check this out. Dennis said, yes, I'll be here till five. And if Moses does not come, I am here on special assignment. I have security duty here just this week. It is not my normal job. Brothers and sisters, I'm at this hotel because God has directed us to stay here for its internet connectivity and its ability to allow me to have the type of recovery support that I need. Things like super hot showers so I'm supposed to steam three times a day. That's here. It's nowhere else. But this is where Dennis is. And this is the only time he would be here. And he's about to meet Moses. And he said, if it doesn't happen today, I am here all week from eight to five. This is not normal, but I am looking forward to meeting your brother Moses because we can and we will bring the church to Lyra. This is the God we serve. This is why even in times like this, where frankly I've had tears running down my face in the last 24 hours, at the same time, I can say, thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and how you continue to reveal yourself, working through my imperfections and the passion of a people who continue to say, we're not big in number, but boy, has the Lord put a footprint down on the world through us for his glory. How blessed are we to be the privileged people, the Acts 1-8 family, to be used of God in such an incredibly, eternally impacting way. I want to ask you, beginning tonight and then again tomorrow morning, join us in this prayer mission and movement. Let us establish that 8 to 9 p.m. prayer time. That as soon as you wake up, prayer time. And let us ask God to continue to use us all by his grace and all for his glory, locally, regionally, and globally. Amen and amen.